it, uh, is uh, really, in a way, uh, for me anyway, maybe not for some, but for me, uh, when a uh, person goes to be with the Lord who's a Christian, uh, it's, uh, it, it's sort of, for me, is a joyous time in my heart. You know, uh, I've lost loved ones that were very dear to me and didn't want to lose them. But to know that they were in heaven, oh, it just really helps. Praise God. And with that uh, precious brother being with the Lord, uh, I'll tell you, he has he had a life here that, uh, uh, especially at the end, that was not good, but... But I'll tell you what, what was waiting on him when he got to heaven is far greater than all the trials and troubles we'll ever face in this life. So that's our great hope. That's our blessed hope of the day that we'll be with the Lord. And uh, so he's there. And among other of God's saints, that's there rejoicing and having a good time in the Lord. If we could see him, folks, we say, why are we? We need to be crying for ourselves, not for them. <laughs> They've got it made. Praise God. Well, it's a it's a blessing to be here with you this morning and uh, to have another opportunity to share God's Word. Uh, uh, I'm thankful for every opportunity God gives me to preach His Word. Um, I have a, hopefully, a short message this morning. Uh, but I want to talk to you this morning uh, about one of the most important things in a Christian's life. And uh, for me, as a Christian, I've learned this over the years in the ministry. For me, as a Christian, there's three things that are very vital in a Christian's life. By vital, I mean absolutely necessary. Uh, you can't do without them. Uh, they are three things that, for me, I believe are crucial in a Christian's life. And if we don't have these things in our lives, our lives, first of all, will not be what God wants them to be. Plus, uh, we won't, uh, we'll have a very hard time surviving as a Christian without these things in our lives. And the first one is the Word of God. Without God's Word, uh, we just won't make it to it. We can't. Jesus said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, uh, I've been known to offend some people when I preach. I had a man get mad at me one time and let me know. After I got done preaching, he was offended at what I said. And I, and I, and I knew why, because he was guilty of what I talked about. And he didn't like it. But I wasn't preaching to him. I was just preaching. I don't. I don't know the time I've ever preached to a person in church. But uh, but sometimes what the what the message sometimes can be such, brother Donnie, that it affects us and touches us and makes us think. I've been in services, uh, other where I I thought the preacher knew about me and was talking about me, and uh, and somebody told him about me. I thought, and he was talking about me, but. Uh, the three things, there's three things that's vital in a person's life, I believe, as a Christian. The first one's the Word of God. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, uh, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In the fourth chapter of Matthew. Now, I don't know if you've got that, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now that verse tells us a lot if we're willing to see what it says. It says uh, that the Word of God come from where? You know, I went to the seminary up here in Louisville, Kentucky and went to a Bible college up there and they said, we know that God didn't actually speak this Word. And I said... We know it was inspired, that it came from the Lord, that He inspired through the Holy Ghost for it to be written, but it's actually speaking it, you know, we, 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 He gave the Holy Spirit the Word, He revealed it to the disciples, and well, 
you know, I'm thankful that God's never let me get off in false doctrine. You know why? Because if the Word of God says that I accept it, if it doesn't, I stay away from it. Period. And so if it says it, I know it's true. But I believe that God spoke this Word. I believe He spoke it out of His own mouth. I believe that. And that's what Jesus said. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, talking about the physical man and the physical food, but by every word that proceedeth out of the thoughts of God. Is that what he said? No, you're not paying attention. Now I'm going to make something mad. If you're going to come to church, are you coming for people to watch you and to look at you? Is that what you're doing? You might as well stay home. When I go to church, I've been to a lot of church services, Brother Donnie, where I just go in the service. I'm not holding it. I'm in the service. Just there with everybody else. And I make up my mind, I did this a long time ago. I made up my mind that when I would go to church, I said, now, I don't know how this preacher's going to preach. I don't know if he's going to be a fireball or just very calm and, and have to really make yourself listen. I don't know what's going to happen there. But I go with this in my mind. I'm going to listen to whoever's preaching and see if there's something in there that God has for me. Some of you don't even pay attention today. I've been quoting that verse and you shook your head yes. And that's what happens. We get into false doctrine because we don't pay attention. When somebody, we get caught up in the things that somebody is saying. It's not, I said, man shall, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the thoughts of God. And you just. I know some of you are offended at me now, but at least I've got your attention. What I was saying about going to church, pay attention to what the man's saying, or you may be misled. Pay attention. Say, Lord, I'm going to give that man 20 minutes or you 20 minutes or 30 minutes and I'm going to listen at what he's saying or she's saying. Now that's free. I didn't mean for that to come out today. But I, I know Brother Trailer has been accused of a lot of things as far as his priest is concerned. But I believe that our Christian life, folks, are more important to God than any other part of our lives. Our Christian life is more important to God because your physical life, though God wants to meet your physical needs and my physical needs, that's going to pass away one of these days. And what you were like spiritually, what was in your spiritual life is what's going to carry over into eternity. And so listen, just listen. If you're going to take the time to dress up and go to church, then take time to listen. Don't make it a waste of time. Praise God. Now, I now I guess some of you can't wait to get out of church this morning. If you hope it is short. Well, I'm going to make it short, Lord willing. The Word of God is the most important thing that you'll ever have, the most important thing in a Christian's life. How many believe that? Any? A few of you. How many? How many believe that the Word of God is one of the most important things in life or the most important? Okay. Do you believe that? How much are you reading? How much are you reading? If it's one of the most important things, how much time are you giving to the Word of God? Now, this was none of my message today. I don't know where God's going with this. <laughs> but how much time are you putting in the Word of God? I know a man today, a precious young man that I love in the Lord, grown to love him, told me just recently, he said, Brother Warren, 
I can't get enough of God's Word. I decided to read so much each day. But he said, now I find myself adding to what I'm reading every day. And he can't get enough. He's putting forth the effort. One of the greatest ministers to ever live was asked this question. How much time do you spend with God alone every day in the Word? Do you know what he said? Five to six hours a day in the Word. One of the most well-known ministers to ever live. Five to six hours a day. Now, if it is the most important, or one of the most, I think it's the most important, if it's one of the most important, then I ask you today, are you spending time in the Word like you should be? That you have the opportunity to? This man here drives a truck. He's on the road a lot. But I'm sure he's got some way of listening. you got a CD player. You can listen to the Word of God. Stick it in that CD player and listen to it going down the road. There's no excuse for it. None. I hear people say, I'm too busy. Well, if you're too busy, you're too busy. If you're too busy for God's Word, you're too busy. You need to eliminate something of your life that is probably not important anyway. You busy watching your sex I mean, soap operas? <laughs> you busy watching your game shows at night or these ungodly shows at night that is promoting, promoting what they call an alternative lifestyle, which is nothing but an abomination to God, and watching men kiss men and women kiss women? Is that what you occupy your time, your time with? Or do you, the opportunities you have to get in the Word of God, do you say, when you have a, a little bit of idle time, do you say, this is, a, this is a time I can get in the Word and spend with the Lord? But the second most important thing, I think, in our lives as Christians is prayer. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. I don't know how many of you think prayer is crucial. I'm going to tell you the truth. Probably most of us spend time in prayer just when we need to ask God something. That's when we pray. And if we have a good day, we don't spend any time at all in prayer. How many of you here has got loved ones in your family that are lost? Okay, I'm going to embarrass you again. If you have loved ones that's lost, how much time are you spending time in prayer every day for their soul? Every day? Or just when you think about it? How important is her soul? To God, it's more important than the whole world. The Bible said this whole world, it, 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 one soul's worth more than this whole world. And if that's it, it's that important to God, and you're God's child, and we're supposed to be representing God, and we should be feeling what God feels, then why are we not in prayer for our loved ones? You've got all kinds of time right down the road to pray. You probably do that. You probably do that. You probably spend a lot of time in prayer. I do that going down the road. People don't roll up. Pray while we're riding down the road. That's not the only time we pray, but we pray while we're riding down the road. And sometimes I'll start out praying when I leave home and don't get done praying until I get to the little church. Well, I believe there's a time when you and I need to get along with God. Just you and Him. And spend time with Him. I was... In the ministry back in the 70s, my wife and family and I pastored, uh, pioneered four churches back in the 70s. We were pastoring one of those churches. And when you pioneer a church, sometimes you're busy and you, 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 do, you have things you have to do. And, uh, but one day it came to me that it had been a while since I got along with the Lord. I pray, but I'm talking about getting along and just spending time with Him. And so, I uh, decided to, to go get along with the Lord. And my, we lived in a tri-level house that had four, I see, three bedrooms in it, and 
And one of them was my daughter's bedroom. She was a little bit thing, about two or three years old. And I decided to go in her room and kneel by her bed. Now, they, they were, kids were all out playing. We had three kids. It was all out playing. And my wife was busy. And so I went in and got down beside her bed and started praying. And when I pray, most of my time I'm praying looking up. David said, I will look up and pray. And I, I, God just always led that. I never knew that that was in the scriptures until I found it years after being saved. But, but I just, I've always done it, just look up and close my eyes and pray. And I did that beside her bed, and all of a sudden, there was the face of Jesus right in front of me. Looking right at me. And he was crying. Tears was coming down both sides of his cheek. And he looked at me and said these words. It has been so long since you came and got along with me. He was hurting. I'll tell you the truth. We love each other more than we love him. Because we make sure we spend time with our families. And have you spent that much time in the last month with the Lord? How much time do you spend with Him? If you're His child, God's child, He wants to spend time with you. He loves you. He loves you more than we could ever love each other. And He longs for you to come and be with Him. He wants you to come to Him. He wants to be close to you and nigh to you. He wants to show love to you. He wants to pour out His Spirit on you. He wants to bless you. He wants to hug you. And say, I love you. And if nobody ever does, Kevin, he does. Don't ever forget that no matter what the world looks like. No matter what your world looks like. He loves you. And that don't stop when trials start coming in and troubles come. He loves you. And he loves me. And he wants us to come and be alone with him. What is prayer, folks? Well, for the most part, the simplest way you can explain prayer, as far as I'm concerned, is just talking to God. That's the simplest way I know to do it. Say it. And I think I've, uh, I've lost my glasses. Let's see, did I take them out somewhere? I might have took them out and left them in my car. So, Brother Donnie, I'm going to have to preach without my glasses. It's okay. No, I'm, I'm fine. I... I'm about done anyway. I, I've been gone longer than I meant to go, Brother Don. But the, the definition of prayer for me is just simply talking to God. That's the simplest form. But here's what I looked up the definition of prayer for the words that's used in the New Testament. And here's what it said prayer means. To ask. How many go to God in prayer and ask things? We go to every night on prayer line, don't we? Asking God for things. And then it says to beseech God. To beg God. That was one of the things I don't beg God. Well, you, you will one day probably. You, you, you never had a time when you've literally come before God and said, God, I beg you to do this. I've done that. Something so desperate. Something really need to be done. It says to beg, or it says to petition God to make a request of, to offer up supplication before the Lord. That's prayer. Asking God for something. Why is prayer important because prayer is one of the greatest weapons that God's given you and me to fight the devil with it's a, one of the greatest weapons we have now let me name some weapons we have fighting the war faith our faith not fighting the Lord I'm sorry that's the fight the Lord. By not fighting the Lord, sometimes we do, I think, sometimes. But I fought him one time over a message. He told me to preach on a woman taking an adultery, and I knew everybody in church didn't need that. I knew it. I knew 
you ever buy there? I said, ain't nobody there needs that, Lord. So I said, Lord, I, I know there's something else. I'm just missing you. I, what, what do you want me to preach about? He said, talk about the one taking the adult. I said, Lord, nobody needs that. That's what I said. And so I went on a little while and, and I said, I started praying, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? He said, talk about the woman taking an adultery, talk about the act of adultery. I said, Lord, there is nobody in church that needs that. It's a wasted message. I told him that. And finally he stayed on me and stayed on me and stayed on me. I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. I'll preach on a woman taking the dope. And that's when I was young, Donnie. I was just getting started. Second church we pastored. And I preached on a woman taken in adultery. And when I gave the invitation that day, one person came forward. And she was what I would have considered to be the backbone of the church. And she came and, and we had a long altar. And that church had a large altar. And I really appreciate that altar because so many people come sometimes. But she came and knelt down and was crying. And I went over side of her and started, knelt down and started praying. And she looked at me and she said, I'm guilty. And I needed to hear you say that Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I needed that, she said. And see, I thought I knew more than God did. Prayer is one of the five major weapons that we have, and there's more weapons than this, but five ones I think of. One of them is faith. That's one of our main weapons, is faith. Another one is what? The Word of God. Faith, the Word of God, the blood of Jesus. What's it say in Revelation 12? They overcame you by the blood of the Lamb. By the, and the next one is the word of their testimony. That's the fourth one. But what's the fifth one? What's the fifth one? Prayer. Prayer. Have any of you ever, ever prayed a prayer of faith and you, when you prayed, it was going to happen just like you prayed? You ever done that? When, when the enemy comes against us, and he, and he really shoots a bad, fiery dart at us. Or comes against us with a trial or some trouble, problems. What do you usually do? Call WJCR? Call your best friend? Who's a Christian and to pray for you? Or do you go to God and pray yourself? I may have you pray. But why are you praying? Why are you praying? Why are you praying? Is it not to get an answer? Yeah. Ain't that what you're praying about? Yeah. To get an answer? Well, how do you assure yourself of getting an answer? Faith. Right? True faith. I believe when I pray, God will do what I say, what I ask Him. I believe that because He's promised us over and over and over. Listen to this promise. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall what? You should have it. Is that true? Who said that? Who said that? Nobody knows? Jesus said it. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall what? You're not paying attention. And 
and I might as well shut up. I only ask for 20 to 30 minutes of your attention, folks. That's not much. What praise soever you desire when you pray. This is for your good. I didn't mean through this message. God's done ministered me through this message. And He wants to minister to you today. He wants you to know that prayer is crucial in your life. And that He loves you. And that He wants to answer your prayers. He only wants you just to believe what He said in His Word. But if you don't know the Word, how can you believe it? What things soever you need. When you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have them. Is that right? It's not right. If you was at the little church, they listen very intently for about 20 or 30 minutes every service. Because they know I'm going to ask them something that if they didn't listen, they wouldn't know the answer. He didn't say what sort of things you need. Exactly. What sort of things you need. There's a big difference there, Brother Tommy. There's a big difference. We have these, but we also have some desires, don't we? And he said, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. As Jesus said that, that's the word of God. Is it true or is it not true? That's why we pray. To get an answer to a problem, something we're facing. And there's other scriptures I could give you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall what? You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. What a promise. What a promise. If you stay in me and live in me and you allow me to live in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done to you. Daddy, he says that to you today. He loves you. Abide in me, Daddy. And let me abide in you. And I give you the promise. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, for all the promises of God have two answers. Two answers. Not three. Not four. Two. And the lady back here in the back, I don't know your name, but she, she gave those answers. What were they? God's Word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For all the promises of God have two answers. Are all the promises are yea and what? Amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Now that'll bring a smile on your face, Lord. That would, Lord, that'll bring a smile, a smile to your face. God's promises have two answers. Now, if you go to enough churches, you'll hear different. I don't know how many times I've heard preachers say there's three answers to God's prayer, to God's promises. Yes, wait, and no. I've heard that so many times. <laughs> Man, that's why you need to listen and you need to pay attention to what's being said and you need to know the Word because that's wrong. That's wrong. If the preacher's deceived and thinking it is or he's just telling people that I don't know what he's doing, what they're doing, but the promises of God, Glenna, have two answers for you as God's child. Yes, and so be it. Amen. So be it. That's what amen means. Yes and so be it. Two promises. The promise has two answers. What's the answers? What's the answers? Yes and what else? Amen or so be it. When you ask God something, His answer to that promise for you is yes and so be it. And all He wants us to do is believe what it says. Because if you do, when you pray, what do you want to do? You're going to receive an answer because you believe that it's going to happen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you, Jesus said. If you ask anything in my name, I will what? 
I will do it, Jesus said. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now, most people in here today are going to leave here, unfortunately, no different than they were when they come in. Because we, we hear a word, we hear, the, we hear a message, and we just hear it, and then we leave, and we start thinking about other things, and we just don't pay no attention to what we're doing, or, or pay attention. But somebody here, some, maybe some, maybe more than one, is going to leave here thinking, you know, I need to take prayer a lot more serious than what I do. We have one of the most valuable weapons that man can have. Did you know that prayer can stop a bomb in midair? A prayer of faith. A prayer of faith, Laura, Lord, I'm going to call you Lord. Glory can see to it that your brother is in the kingdom of God. And all he's wanting you to do is believe when you pray that he will save him. And it's time. Don't let the enemy come in and tell you different. I heard a man say one time, he said, I used to believe there was nothing impossible with God except one thing. And that's salvation for another lover because of the free will. He said, I, God said, I said all things are possible. Believe when I pray for when you pray for your loved ones that God will save them. I claimed my four kids back in the cities, and I said, Lord, none of my kids are going to hell, not one of them. Not one. And I meant it. And I was determined. You ever have something bad happen in your life and one of your loved ones is really something's really wrong and you decide to really get a hold of God. You say, now wait a minute. This is not going to be like, like normal. I'm not just going to pray and come out. I'm going in there and I'm going to get an answer. And I'm not coming out until I do. That's what God wants. And you need to do that for your children. Your children will perish if you don't do it. There's nobody else going to do it for them. And you ought to love your children enough to do it. And claim them. And when I did that, all of a sudden I seen this vision in front of me and Satan was in front of the, a demon was in front of me and I was standing here and my children was behind him and, and I said, devil, if you're going to get to my children, you got to go through me. And you can't go through me because I'm in Christ and he covers me and you can't go through him so you can't touch me and you're not getting my children. And I know all four of them are going to heaven. They're going. It's one of the most powerful things we can do, folks. Pray and believe. And God will give you an answer. You have at your disposal every day the ability to go to God in prayer and pray and believe and see God answer your prayers. Praise God. It's all by faith, folks. Praise God. Now, I want to make this statement before I close. I felt like God gave this to me this morning, early this morning. And I'm trying to read it without my glasses, so I'm, I'm going to try to make out what this says here. Praise God. And by the way, before you leave, I want to apologize to you if I offended any of you. I'm not apologizing for telling the truth, but I'm sorry you got offended. I hope you didn't. Praise God. I want to make a statement that some of you may not believe. And may even take issue with it. But I forgive you for that reaction. Because I realize it's because you don't know the word. That you would react opposite of this. Because you don't know it. If you knew the word, you'd know what I'm about to say is true. Listen to this, folks. A child of God. How many of you say, I'll give you one minute, Brother Warren, listen to you. Raise your hand. Okay. You that said that, listen. Then listen to this. A child of God. It's never meant to be overcome or conquered by Satan 
in any way whatsoever. Now she knows it. She believes it. A child of God's is never meant to be overcome or conquered by Satan in any way whatsoever. God's children are always meant to have victory over the devil and all of his works. That's the truth. That's the truth. And you know who my example is? That did that? That lived that way? Who? Jesus. Now, I don't know who your example in life is. I feel sorry for you if it's another human being. Because I don't know one is perfect. But I know one who is perfect. Jesus. And this is, this is, he's the one that I look to as my example. I don't look to any man, woman, no other human being. I look only to Christ as my example. And the way he lived is the way we're meant to live. He lived, now some of you will disagree, but it's because you don't know the word. He lived his life as a man filled with the Holy Spirit, not as the Son of God. You believe that? Because if it was as the Son of God, you and I don't stand a chance. Because we're not divine. And the Son of God could never have sinned because say God can't be tempted with sin. But he lived it as a man filled with the Spirit of God and he overcame every temptation that Satan brought his way through the power of the Holy Spirit of God and you and I can do the same thing. He's my example. I look to him and I say that to you to say this, not one time in the life of Jesus was he ever overcome or conquered by Satan. You, if you think so, you tell me where it was. Where was it that he was overcome? Never. Never. One time. Never. And he's my example. And he said, I did this so you, Warren Trailer, could do it too. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. The Bible said, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The reason some of us have a problem with the flesh is we're not walking in the Spirit. And I know that what I've said today has been hard and that's only half my message. Thank God for finishing. Oh, brother Warren. Yeah, I'm cutting it short. I meant for it to be a lot shorter, to be honest, folks. I love you. And I, what do you believe in? I don't matter, I do. I love you enough. I heard a man say last night when I watched the Christian movie. I heard him say to his son. I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I love you enough to tell you the truth, folks. I want you to have a great walk with Jesus Christ. I want Him to be so real to you that you're walking with Him, talking with Him, conversing with Him all day long. All day long. He loves you. And He wants that kind of life with you. Father, thank you for these precious, precious folks that's come out today. And Lord, anything I may have said that wasn't of you, I pray you forgive me. I don't want to offend people, but I do have to give the truth out. And Father, right now, I pray that you'll help anyone here today that heard something that maybe they didn't like, so maybe just that caused them, God, to just take time to examine, to examine, to examine what was said today. And help us to leave here, Lord, not offended, but leave here, Lord, with a decision 
to research what was said today, to get in the Word of God and look it up and to get all we can, learn all we can about prayer and and, uh, and things in our lives, Lord, uh, that we face, uh, the, knowing the Word of God and, and, and uh, whatever else might be on our hearts and minds that we need to do. But Lord, help us to be mature enough to receive the truth of Your Word. Lord, I pray for each and every person in this place today that those who are here today that's not saved, I ask, Father, would you do whatever you have to do to bring them to the place that they realize they're lost without you and they need, it, and they need Christ in their life. And that they come and be saved, Lord. Maybe not in this service, but sometime in the future, they would come to you and be saved. Now, Father, I pray that if there's people here today with needs in their lives, that you reach down this very moment and touch them and minister to them. And do whatever miracle they need, Father. Maybe in a family member's life. Whatever it is, God, that you would do it. And we'll give you the praise and glory for it, Father. Thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. And as we leave here today, may we leave here thinking about you. With you on our minds and hearts. And just walk in your presence all day long, Father. I pray that, Father, today, in Jesus' name, amen. Folks, before I leave you leave, I just want to say to you, one of the, the thing, things that I love about Jesus more than anything else, one of, the most, one of the things I love more about him than anything was his truthfulness. And sometimes he said things that people didn't like. He told one man, he said, get behind me, Satan, for you do not say the things that be of God. And who was that he told to? Peter, his own disciple. Now, boy, how would you like that? If you're praying, and the Lord, you're praying about something, and the Lord says to you, get behind me, Satan, you don't say the things that be of God. Well, that would get you. That would get, that would get me. He was brutally truthful, but the thing I love about him, did he? You always knew that what come out of his mouth was the truth. God bless you, Brother Don. Anybody here wants prayer today?